لو كنا نسمع أو نعقل ما كنا في أصحاب السعير If only we listened and we had intelligence we would not now be inhabitants of the hellfire They brought this new principle to defend Ahlul Bida to defend them from being spoken against which is al muwazana what does this mean it means that when you criticize someone or refute someone you have to mention his good deeds at the same time because if you don't you have oppressed him and this is from the greatest of batil the greatest of falsehood because this is not from the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the quran nor is it the way of the messenger in the sunnah nor is it the way of the sahaba nor is it from the way of the salaf because when the salaf warned against the people of batil when they said so and so is a jahmi did they say yes but you know he 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 he's a very generous at the same time did, did they do that the answer is no when you pick the when you pick up the books of ahadith the books of rijal when they criticize certain people that this one is a murji this one is a qadri this one is so and so did they mention anything else along with that that this man did hajj 15 times and this man did umrah 10 times and this man was nice to his children this man was whatever did they mention that no no, because what is the intention? The intention is to warn from falsehood and warn from its people. But when you now start saying, yes, yeah, I, I know this man, you know, he says that, you know, uh, I'm not sure where Allah is. Well, maybe he could be, you know, above his throne. Maybe he could be upon the earth. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Okay, maybe he's got this doubt and maybe, you know. But, you know, subhanAllah, he's, he's at the prayer every day and he's, you know, he's memorized the Quran. And then you mention all these good things. Wallahi, this, 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 is, this is batil. And for that reason, so anyway, do you understand what's going on here now? Just like our example from yesterday that we said that the Jahmiya came along and said, Allah is, is not above the throne. Then another group came afterwards when the truth was made clear and they said, well, yeah, Allah is above the throne, but he's not in a place. But they mean the same thing, right? The same thing is happening here with these usul, right? So the principle of Hassan al-Banna is refuted, demolished. Now they're trying to bring the same thing. Why? Because these people are upon the same manhaj. They want to gather the people together into a group. They want to make revolution against the rulers, topple them, because they believe the rulers are kuffar. Okay? So now, along come the second group, Salman al-Awda, Abdul Rahman Abdul Khalik, Adnan Arur. This comes from Salman al-Awda. Look at the deception here. Look at the, look at the cunning and the conniving here. This man came along, Salman al-Awda, he said, he wrote a book. And in this book, he wanted to make a distinction between Al-Ta'ifatul <clears throat> Mansura, which is mentioned in the Sunnah, and Al-Firqatul Najiyah, which is mentioned in the Sunnah. Because there are some ahadith in which the Messenger said that this Ummah will split to 73 sects, all of them in Hellfire, except for one. So this is Firqatul Najiyah. And then we have other ahadith in which the Messenger Al-Islam said that there will never cease to be a group from my Ummah, a Ta'ifa upon my Ummah, which, which is manifestly upon the truth. <coughs> so this is what the scholars call at taifatul mansura the aided group. So along came Salman al-Awda, he said, these two are two different groups. Okay? The firqatul najiyah, the one which is saved, includes many different groups. Ikhwan, Tabligh, Hizbut Tahrir, it includes all those groups. But as for the taifatul mansura, it is a very specific group referring to, you know, the scholars who are firm upon the sunnah and the people of hadith and so on and so forth, whatever. Right? So he made a distinction. What is the purpose behind this distinction? To, to basically accommodate Ahlul Bida. Ikhwan, Tabliq, Hizmut Tahrir, all of them are from the Firqatul Najiyah. So therefore this means that we can cooperate with them, we can work with them, we can make ta'awan with them. Same principle. But he's using this issue in a very deceptive way. For that reason, Sheikh Rabi refuted this man and he wrote a book. Al <laughs> Ta'ifatul Mansura is the, the, the Firqatul Najiyah, or the other way around. That Al Firqatul Najiyah is the Ta'ifatul Mansura. So uh, Sheikh Rabi refuted this man's bid'a <coughs> and he established that the Firqatul Najiyah, that those who are the saved group, they are the same as the Ta'ifatul Mansura. They are those who are upon what the companions were upon. They are Ahlul Athar, they are Ahlul Hadith, they are Ahlul Sunnah. They are the Ghuraba. All of these are the same terms for one group of people. The Sheikh saw what this man was trying to do. The Sheikh saw what he was trying to do. And so he refuted this man's bid'ah. So you see, that's another group. We see another man, Abdul Rahman, Abdul Khalik. He comes along. He's upon that same fikr, poisoned with that same fikr. He says, another principle, Ta'addadul jama'at. 
This is the, his new principle out. Ta'addadul jama'at. What does this mean? The multiplicity of groups. So he began to say that this is something good. The fact that you have many jama'at working in da'wah, it has competition between them. They strive, have zeal, they work harder. This is something good. Ikhwan, tabligh, tahri, this is something good. Right? So he brought this statement. Ta'addadul jama'at. What is intention? Same thing. Same thing, because he's upon that bid of hakimiyyah. He's upon that same thing. He was, he was the one who promoted to al hakimiyyah. So to clear of the rulers, then gather all the people together to make real. He's upon the same thing. So this is the intention. Okay, so now, when he wrote this book, Shaykh Rabi Hafizahullah Ta'ala wrote another book. He said, Jama'atun wahida, one jama'a, la jama'at, wasirat wahid, la, you know, so he said, one, one, one jama'a, not many jama'at. And sirat wahid, one path, not many paths. So the shaykh defended the truth against this mubta, this, this innovator, who was trying to just, again, bring the same bidah of Hassan al-Banna, but in a very deceptive way. Right? So you see what's going on. Now we have another man, Adnan Arur. He's another Qutubi, another man who is following the fikr of Sayyid Qutub and Hassan al-Banna. He comes along and he brings other principles, again, for the same objective. So he brings a principle, it is called Nusahih Wala Nujarrih. Which means we correct the mistake, but we do not criticize or disparage. Can you see the connection of all these principles to the principle of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? It's all the same thing, but expressed in different ways. Just like the Jahmiyyah, the Quran is created. Then along comes another group. Uh, the Quran, which is Allah's speech, is Kalam Nafsi, but the Quran that we have, it's, it's actually created. Then comes another group. I don't say the Quran is created, but my recitation of the Quran is created. What are all these people trying to say? The same thing. They're trying to deny that Allah speaks with speech tied to His will and power. Same with these people. With all these principles, they are trying to do the same thing. So now, what are these people trying to do? So the first level, what did I say? What was that level? Uh, abolition. What does abolition mean? You completely abolish criticism altogether. Altogether, it's gone. There is no criticism. That's Hassan al-Banna. This group came along, these people that I mentioned, what are they trying to do? Neutralize the criticism. Let's neutralize the criticism. So now you understand the principle. When you refute someone, you have to mention his good deeds so you don't wrong him. You understand? Right? So, yes, we know that they're going to get criticized, but let's, let's neutralize the criticism. This is what these principles are about, right? To, to, to neutralize that criticism. Nusahih wala nujarrih. All right, we correct the mistake, but let's not start speaking of that individual. You know? So, we have the Jahmiyyah present today. They believe Allah is everywhere, or they believe Allah is not upon the throne. What does this mean? Yeah, let's just refute the mistake. Yes, to believe Allah is, above, is not above the throne is a mistake. So, what they're trying to say is just do that and don't do anything else. Don't do anything else. Don't start criticizing people and saying this one's a jahmi, this one's a mu'attil, this one's this. Don't do that. Just criticize the mistake and then, you know, that's it. What do they intend by this? They intend by this to defend Ahlul Bida, to defend them. Same, you know, so you understand, you understand how the Bida is evolving, becoming more subtle, becoming more complex. So this now is the second group. Second group now in the middle. Right, now we come to the third group. And this, this collection of people, they came with the biggest war and the biggest battle. Al Ma'ribi, Abu al Hassan al Ma'ribi, Ali Hassan al Halabi, Abdul Malik al Ramadani, who were upon this, this recent, this new, now we're, in, now we're in the 10 years, now we're in 2010, and whatever is before that. So this Ma'ribi, Abu al Hassan al Ma'ribi, he's an Ikhwani. He was a takfiri from Egypt. He fled Egypt. He went to Yemen. He must have spent maybe six months with Sheikh Muqbil, six months. And then he used to travel to Sheikh Al-Albani, only, he only made three travels, 1410, 1416, 1418. He did some cassettes and then it became famous that, you know, Al-Ma'rabi sitting with Albani and whatever, whatever. So he's not really studied with any of the scholars. He came along, his asal is that he is a takfiri ikhwani from Egypt. So he, he came along and he's upon the same thing. He's upon the same thing. He then brought some more principles and some more ideas which have the exact same objective. What they really want to try and do is to 
nurture the, the, the youth upon this idea that we don't accept things straight away, that we should go and make the thabbat and whatever. It's a very deceptive way of trying to reach the same objective, to defend Ahlul Bidah, to put barriers between the people accepting the warnings of the scholars against the Ahlul Bidah, to put as many barriers as possible. So this is at thabbat Okay, look at how it's becoming more sophisticated, more trick, more deceptive, more you know subtle. Likewise, another one of his principles is al mujmal wal mufassal, al mujmal wal mufassal, the general and the specific. What does he mean by this? The reason why he invented this principle is because Sayyid Qutb was being refuted by the ulama for his statements of disbelief for his statements of wahdatul wujud, for his statements refuting, uh, uh, criticizing the sahaba. So he came with this principle and said, right, when we see someone makes a general statement, which seems to be an error, then we need to go back and look at some other statements of his, where he might have spoken specifically. And then from that, we shouldn't do injustice to him. We should put them two together and make an excuse for him. Right? So let me give you an implementation of this principle. In other words, what he's trying to say is, Let's say, for example, Sayyid Qutb says that Muawiyah radiallahu anhu and Amr bin al-As radiallahu anhu that they use deception and trickery and nifaq, they use hypocrisy in all these different ways in order to, in order to uh, you know, plot against Ali. And so he makes some statement like this. And likewise, he criticizes Uthman, for example. Okay, now... What al maribi is saying, we can't really criticize this man up until we've gone and looked at all of his other statements. Maybe he praised Uthman. Maybe he praised the Sahaba. So when we find this other statement, then we put the two together, and then we look at his other statement in a positive light. This Ikhwan is the greatest of Baqir.